My Aunt Jackie gave me a silver spoon as a baby a shower gift. She said it was for all the words I was going to eat. <laughs> My friend Carol often joked, the best parenting you'll ever do is before you have kids. <laughs> and it's true, I was the best mother in my mind before I had kids. I knew I would do a better job than my mother's, and I had two of them. I was pretty sure I'd do better than the mothers of the students in my classroom, and I was positive I would outperform those out of control mothers at the supermarket. You see, I possessed a wealth of experience. I had babysat every weekend. I taught preschool. I was a camp counselor. I was an elementary school teacher. I had logged my 10,000 hours, hit expert status, and I was a top candidate for the job. So when I got pregnant with my first, I went to my Aunt Sybil to further validate my readiness for this job. She's a school teacher and a mother of five, and I looked up to her. So I said to her, being a teacher made you a much better mother, right? And she looked at me and said, let me think about that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but I think maybe being a mother made me a better school teacher. Oh no, maybe this mothering job was going to prove harder than I had anticipated. Could it be that teaching may not be my e-ticket to parenting? No. I decided I was going to be the exception. I'd glide through the process. I had read all the books. I knew I'd have a natural drug-free birth. I had a firm grasp on attachment parenting. I had 13 casseroles in the freezer. And my house was baby-proofed. I mean, what else could I need? Looking back, I can tell you what else I needed. I needed the epidural. But what I hadn't anticipated was the overwhelming love I would feel when I held my son in my arms for the first time. It was at that moment that I understood that lie down in the middle of the road kind of love for another human being. And it's that very love that clouds all good judgment. <laughs> the crib in his room, we didn't use it. Martin slept in a cradle right next to our bed, which soon became empty as he entered our bed. So when we had another child, we had the perfect solution, buy another bed. <laughs> but truthfully, I wouldn't have changed those crowded, no privacy, tricky love life years. Some of my favorite memories are lying in bed with my husband and having our three kids wedged between us. <laughs> Asleep. <laughs> it was in those moments that we celebrated our masterpieces. All the tantrums of the day are forgiven when you watch your angel sleep. But as a new parent, I was still clinging to the idea that I would be exceptional, ever patient, consistently attentive. Two weeks after I gave birth, I was at my sister's house, watching her two children beg for her attention. My sister, engrossed in her task at hand, ignored them. I was appalled. <laughs> she looked at me and said, oh, just you wait. Someday you too will ignore your children. <laughs> and when that happens, I'm not gonna judge you. Her prediction was correct. I am now the mother of three, and I am convinced that the ability to ignore one's children increases with the number of children one has. And if I've become an expert at anything, it's the ability to tune my children out from time to time. Recently, I finally had a moment to myself. So when I heard my daughter's fighting, I chose to ignore it. When that fighting turned into screeching, I quietly got up and closed the office door. <laughs> Inevitably, they found me and they came banging on the office door. 
I opened it to find my middle daughter, who previously had two loose teeth, now had one, and it was dangling by a thread. Her baby sister had headbutted her because she wasn't a good sharer. Anna kept yelling indignantly, she knocked my tooth out. I went to her. I gently placed my fingers on her dangling tooth and said, no, honey, she knocked your teeth out. <laughs> tooth fairy had a baby big that night. But with my tail between my legs, I called my sister to confess my sins, and she graciously laughed and said, congratulations, you're a veteran. Motherhood is a daily struggle. I want to be that mother on Facebook who posts the picture of the perfect craft she's done with her child. <laughs> I want to post a picture of my kid winning some district-wide award. But that would require remembering my cell phone, taking the picture, and borrowing someone's kid who won the award. <laughs> You have to give up on your ideals of motherhood. You swallow your Facebook lacking pride and you reach out to other mothers. And then you grow as a parent. The truly great mothers, they don't judge. They empathize. Sometimes when you admit some terrible parenting moment to another mother, she doesn't even give advice. Instead, she sees your story and raises you. <laughs> with perhaps an even more horrific moment. This sisterhood of motherhood, it's helped me get through the last 14 years. Parenting is hard, but there are those moments that make it all worth it. When my son finally got his first hit on the big field, when my daughter is dressed up in my jewelry, singing to herself in the mirror, and I catch a glimpse of the woman she'll be one day. When my baby writes a Mother's Day card to me that says, I weigh 70 pounds. <laughs> and that she likes to kiss me. At the end of the day, motherhood is by far the best thing I've ever done. Elizabeth Stone said, making the decision to have a child, it's momentous. It's to decide forever to have your heart go walking around outside your body. Here's to Marty, Anna, and Monica. I love you. Thank you for being the three hearts outside my body. <laughs>